A very good morning to you, dear students. Welcome to Standard Ninth, dear students. This year we have in science two subjects. We are going to study in science science part one and science part two. Now, what a particular subject lies in science one and science two? First, we will discuss, and then further we will see which chapters belongs to part one. And part two. So, students in standard nine, up to eight, y'all had only one science. But in standard nine, you have part one and part two. So, in standard nine, science is divided into two parts. It's science part one, science part two. Under part one, we are going to study subject related or chapters related with. Physics and Chemistry. In Science Part Two, we are going to learn chapter related to Chemistry and Biology. Now, you will study two bifurcated particular subjects in Part One. We are only going to study about the Physics and Chemistry, all related with Physics laws and everything. We are going to study in Part One. Whereas in part two we are going to study again with few chapters of chemistry and lots of biology. Under biology also we are going to study about microbiology, okay? Animal classification, plant classification. Further, we are going to study about many of the uh, uh, like biological chapters which are related with the environment. So which is considered as an environmental study also. So all the mixture comes under biology. Standard ninth, all science chapters are very interesting and will help y'all in standard tenth as well as for your further studies. This is a proper base of your syllabus and your curriculum. You will enjoy science throughout the year. The only thing what you have to do is you have to give your hundred percent and your full concentration. And just listen to the videos properly, and then you will excel in your studies. Yes, students. Science is a subject where we learn from our own experiences. Okay, the experiences which we see into our nature, the experiences we we try to feel our own self. Okay, we experience it. Okay, whenever you see things, which is called as an observation. Science is related with observation. Science is related with analysis and application. Why I am saying so? Because I have seen many students just try to learn the answers. They just buy hard the answers and they don't try to clear their concepts. They don't try to understand the concepts. But dear students, science is a subject where you need to clear your concepts. And how can you do that? You can just observe the things which are moving around okay which you can observe into the nature and what uh, observation and application is the two important key things in science what you observe you try to apply and then the science comes in a great scientist okay what did they did, did how did science came up it's the mother of invention for everything okay the invention was done the need when we when we thought of the need of the things the invention was done for an example when corona virus came up we thought of vaccination we thought of vaccine and the vaccine our our indian scientist okay they did an application and then they made the vaccine and now it is available for the people right so your science stands with application analysis where we need to observe things that only we are going to do throughout the year in science the students all chapters are very very interesting you will live, you will really enjoy all the chapters and you will get a lot of knowledge gain knowledge okay clear your concepts if you don't understand ask the teachers and we are always available for you to explain. So myself, Pooja Soni, going to teach you all this year Science 1. In which I am going to teach you all Physics and Chemistry in Science 1. So 
today we are going to start with the introduction of our first chapter which is laws of motion so our first chapter in science one let's begin with a lots of motivation and lots of joy and lots of uh, uh, motivation in our heart yes we can do it and we have to do and we, we are going to study very nicely before i start with my chapter i would like to inform you a few things which you keep in your mind your science one and science two notebooks will be different up to now you had only one notebook for science up in eighth standard but in ninth standard you will have two separate notebooks one notebook is for science one another notebook will be for science two notes will be given to you all regularly after completing of the chapter after after completion of the chapter notes will be provided to you so dear students where to write the notes and what kind of notebook we need you need long notebook which is 200 pages okay so directly you will buy 200 pages notebook got it dear students so this 200 pages notebook will last throughout the year means you don't have to make uh, another notebook after second semester you will continue with the same notebook for your second semester also so everything will be systematically noted down in your 200 note uh, 200 pages notebook only got it so dear students for science one you will purchase 200 uh, pages notebook and for science two you will purchase 200 pages notebook again i am repeating it dear students for science there will be separate notebooks for science one there will be a separate notebook and for science two there will be a separate notebook it should be 200 pages notebook so let's begin with our first chapter laws of motion so let's begin with our chapter which is chapter number 1 laws of motion now what is motion and what are the laws of motion we are going to study in this particular chapter this chapter uh, belongs to physics dear students about motion already we have studied in lower classes like in 7th standard also we have studied about motion then little part we have studied in standard 8 also now we know that what is motion a physical motion okay and mechanical motion there are different types of motions which we are dealing whenever a object uh, leaves its place okay and it tries to move from its place in a simple language it is called as a motion in this chapter we are going to study about what are the different laws which were stated for motion before we start let's open our textbook take our pencils in a hand and whatever marking i will give you all please do mark in your textbook because those are the important definitions in our textbook dear students make a habit of learning the things from your textbook reading textbook is very very important so keep your textbook next to you open and remove your pencils and whatever markings are given do mark throughout the video so laws of motion chapter number 1 which is on page number 1 let's go motion of an object our first topic here one small activity is given let's do the activity the activity says in such a way in which of the following examples can you see can you sense motion how will you explain the presence or an absence of motion so before we deal with this activity we will just go through the definition of motion what does motion says what is motion if the position of an object changing with respect to its surrounding is said to be motion okay so let's analyze this definition if the position for an example i am standing over here and my position here it is standing but if i try to move from my this position to this position over here my position changed from there to here so that's why we can say my body is under motion when i am moving when i am uh, there is a displacement when 
I leave my original place and reach to certain place. Okay, that is called as a motion. So, dear students, if the position of an object is changing, right now I was standing over here, my position, and I was changing. Okay, so I am an object here. I changed my position from here to over here. Okay, so that is is changing with the respect to the surrounding where the surrounding is. Okay. With respect to its surrounding, it is said to be in motion. Okay, so when a position is changed, okay, or a certain object is in a motion, that is called as a motion. So there are few examples given here in activity where we, we have to find it out which particular object is in motion. So the first example here is a flight of a bird. Now birds are flying. Okay, they are under motion. So in bracket, right there, motion. A stationary train means what? A train is standing at a rest, at a platform. What what does it says that it is not in a motion? Why? Because it is at the state of rest. It's standing there. So right there, not in motion. Next is leaf flying through air. Again, in motion. A stone lying on a hill. Okay, the stone which is on the hill is at a uh, at a state of a rest. It is not moving. Okay. So that's why when it is not moving, it is not changing its position, then we can say that it's not in motion. So our first definition, you will write it down uh, uh, in your textbook or you can mark it down in your textbook is what? That if the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding, it is said to be a motion. So we have completed our first activity. Further, let's see what does it say. We see the motion of several objects every day. Sometimes we cannot see the motion of an object directly, as in case of a breeze. Can you list other examples of motion besides those given here? Now, they are saying there are certain motions which we cannot see, like the air is moving, okay, it's moving, but we cannot see them. So, there are many other examples also where we cannot see the motion, okay? The flow of the blood in our body, it is moving from up and down, up and down. But can we see? We can't see, okay? So, there are certain examples where we cannot even see the motion, but we can feel the motion, okay? Now, the wind is moving, okay? The breeze is there. We can feel it when it moves very faster or we, uh, when, when it is very, very uh, high, okay? So, then we can feel it. Got it? So all these are the examples. There are certain uh, motion which we cannot see them. That is mentioned over here. Again, they have said some try this. Think about it. You are traveling in a bus. Is the person sitting next to you in motion? Yes. The person is sitting next to me. you is also in motion. Why? Because the bus is moving and it is taking the uh, the object which is there inside the bus also it is moving further what do you take into consideration to decide if an object is moving or no how do we come to know whether the given object is moving or no then this definition lies over there again what is the definition says again if the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding it is said to be in a motion okay dear students so for that question this definition you will write it down in case if this type of question comes what you will write there you will write there if an object is in a motion with respect to its surrounding and the important keyword here in this definition is when it is changing its position it is moving okay it's changing its position then we say the particular object is in motion. Further, we can say that what is motion? Further, we say that motion is a relative concept. What is motion? Motion is a relative concept. So, relative concept is a key word over here. Another thing, further, if the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding, then it is said to be a motion. Otherwise, the, it is said to be at a rest. If it is not changing its position, it is standing still. I am standing here. I am not moving. Okay. 
then my body is at a rest. Then the object is at a rest. Got it, dear students? Further, motion is related with displacement, speed, velocity, and acceleration. A very important terms which we are going to study in this particular chapter, which is what? First is displacement. Second is speed. Next is velocity. And the third important fourth point is acceleration. What is displacement? When a particular object is changing its position, like for an example, I am standing here and then I try to move it over here. So there was a displacement of an object from its starting point to the end point. What is this? That's called as a displacement. For an example, this particular marker I am holding in my this hand. When I tried to move it from this hand to this hand, there was a displacement from my right hand to my left hand. That's called as a displacement. The object is moving from one place to the another. Got it, dear students? So that's called as a displacement. So let's first discuss, discuss what is relative concept, which is also explained in our textbook. Further, let's see. You have learned that the motion is a relative concept. Mark that word relative concept. Why it is so? Further, if the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding, then it is said to be motion, which I have written over here, and you will mark that as a definition. Okay? So, if in the exam they ask you what is the definition of motion, what definition are you going to write there? You will write that if the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding, it is said to be at a motion. One more thing I would like to say y'all from starting itself that dear students, your laws, your definitions, your theories, whatever you write, it should be your textual language. Laws, motion, uh, laws, theories, and uh, what we say the uh, definitions cannot be write, uh, written in your own words. Answers you all can write it in your own words. But the definition should be textual only. It should be textual language. So that's why try to mark all your definition in the textbook. So then when you all are sitting and you all are revising your chapter, you know that on particular page which definition is there and which definition is marked okay always study page wise the chapter and mark each and every important thing in your page that's why i'm saying y'all keep your textbook next to you along with your pencil and keep marking when you are going through the videos which will help y'all for a long run afterwards to understand students first we will understand what is relative concept okay and why motion is called as a relative concept so what is the meaning of this word called relative concept now there is one example which is given there or there is a question which is asked over there is that if a bus is moving okay a bus is moving and a person sitting next to you is whether the person is in motion or no that is asked you now yeah, what happens? The situation depends upon the surrounding, what we say. Or depends upon the particular situation of a person. We come to know whether the particular person is in motion or not. Let's take an example like where, where the object is sitting next to you. Okay, a person is sitting next to you and you are traveling in a bus. The bus is moving but your body is at a rest. Okay, so you feel that that the person next to you is not moving or for an example uh, a person who is standing outside the bus okay will see that the person who is sitting next to you or you are in motion so it depends on the position it depends upon the particular surrounding or the uh, the, the concept where whether the person is in motion or no here that's why motion is called as a relative concept it depends on what kind of a situation is there. When you are sitting inside the bus, you don't feel that the person next to you is, is moving. Why? Because he is exactly sitting next to you. Okay? You all are at a place of a rest. But if the same bus is seen from outside the bus, okay? A person who is standing outside the bus will feel that you both are moving. 
So that's why it is said that the motion is a relative concept. That's why the word relative concept is given because it depends on what kind of a situation is there. Person sitting inside, inside the bus feels that the person is in rest, right? But the person who is standing outside the bus feels that the person is in motion. But actually the body is in motion. It is moving. Okay. This, that's why it is called as a relative concept. Further, we are going to study what are the different types of uh, uh, terms which are related with motion. The first important term which is related with motion is displacement. And there is one activity which is given in our textbook related with displacement which we are going to continue in our next video. So dear students, today we have learned about what is motion and what are the important concepts which are related with motion. So let's go through a quick revision. What is motion and what are the things which are related with motion? If the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding, it is said to be in motion. Motion is a relative concept. I have explained you very clearly what is called as a relative concept. It depends on a particular situation what the object is in. Further, if the position of an object is changing with respect to its surrounding, then it is said to be in motion. Otherwise, it is said to be at a state of rest. Further, motion is related to displacement, speed, velocity and acceleration. So today, we have gone through page number one, half of the page number one we have completed. There is a very beautiful activity which we are going to continue with our next video and in detail we will understand that activity. What is displacement and what is distance? Have a good day. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you.